Welcome to worship in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm Pastor Elizabeth Hiller and welcome to the sanctuary here at Dilworth Lutheran Church for our midweek brief worship service. Uh, two very brief notes. We welcome today and every day the people of Lisney Lutheran Church, the people out at Lisney in rural Holly are joining us uh, for online worship this month of July. Uh, you are so welcome here and we thank God for your presence and we continue praying for you during your time of pastoral transition. Uh, we also are here uh, asking that if you have not supported our congregation financially this summer uh, for Dilworth Lutheran people and friends, uh, we ask for your gifts. Uh, it is summertime here at Lakes Country and our expenses do not change. I would appreciate and I am thankful for any gift you can give to support the ministries of our congregation. Uh, we'll begin our worship today in prayer. Almighty God, we thank you for planting in us the seed of your word. By your Holy Spirit, help us to receive it with joy, live according to it, and grow in faith and hope and love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our scripture today is from 2 Corinthians, the very first chapter. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, to the church of God that is in Corinth, including all the saints throughout Achaia. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of all mercies and the God of all consolation, who consoles us in all our affliction, so that we may be able to console those who are in any affliction with the consolation which we ourselves have received from God. For just as the sufferings of Christ are abundant for us, so also our consolation is abundant through Christ. If we are being afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation. If we are being consoled, it is for your consolation, which you experience when you patiently endure the same sufferings that we also are suffering. Our hope for you is unshaken, for we know that as you share in our sufferings, so also you share in our consolation. We do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, of the affliction we experienced in Asia, for we were so utterly, unbearably crushed that we despaired of life itself. Indeed, we felt that we had received the sentence of death so that we would not rely on ourselves, but on God who raises the dead. He who rescued us from so deadly a peril will continue to rescue us. On him we have set our hope that he will rescue us again, as you also join in helping us by your prayers, so that many will give thanks on our behalf for the blessing granted us through the prayers of many. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Grace and peace to you from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Today, we are beginning a brand new series, a worship series uh, called Being Christian, comma, Together. Uh, following Jesus in a world that is fighting. Uh, we're going to go through the New Testament book of 2 Corinthians, which we started tonight. In the next weeks, we're going to hear God's word from 2 Corinthians on difficult aspects of loving each other, of difficult times of being together as people, being family, even sometimes being a church. Uh, we're going to hear what it means to stand with each other. We're going to hear about forgiveness, living with imperfect people like me and you. Uh, growing in faith together, and growing as people with generous spirits. And the last night, someone here shared that they have left social media. In their case, they del deleted their Facebook account. Uh, not only will they miss the hottest new cat videos, but they hope to miss their family and their friends and the parents from their middle school son's basketball team fighting about politics 
over the next months. As you may have noticed, it is a presidential election year. As always, the stakes are high for the future of our nation. And not only are there strong beliefs about this coming election, but we're all still trying to figure out the politics of the pandemic. Mask wearing, gathering with people who aren't in your nuclear family. And in addition, we're still hearing and learning more about the deep history of racism in our nation. And here very locally in the two school districts that most people in our congregation live in, there are bonds for building new school buildings. There's the real tension that arises from these building projects. These issues, national issues and very local issues, and the deeply held beliefs that they illuminate, these are on top of normal life. Families that have great relationships, families with strained relationships, marriages that are strained because of the financial fallout of the lockdown. Today, we heard the very beginning, the, the, what's called a salutation of Paul's second letter to the Christians in Corinth. Paul wrote to a community that not only was divided because of the real issues that they faced together, but Paul wrote this letter to people who had really hurt him in the past. Paul shares elsewhere that he had gone and visited this group of people in Corinth. Corinth was kind of a fancy cosmopolitan city um, in south central Greece. And, and Paul was the very first person to tell this group of Christians, of people, about Jesus. He was the one who introduced our Lord to them. They trusted him, they followed him, they followed God together. And then Paul visited them again and someone attacked him verbally. Uh, his credibility was questioned. They questioned the very gospel that Paul had proclaimed to them. Now remember, Paul has pretty thick skin in the Bible. It's not that being questioned was what hurt Paul so deeply. It was that not one other person had stood up for Paul. No one else defended him. And so Paul left. Now for the Christians in Corinth, for their part, they had also been hurt by Paul. Paul wouldn't receive financial support from them, even though he had taken financial support from Christians in Macedonia, Christians just some 500 miles north of them. This made them feel like Paul didn't trust them. Then Paul didn't visit them again when he had said he would. They wondered if Paul was dependable and he was harsh in a letter, a written letter that he had sent to them. Paul hadn't been perfect with the Corinthians. They were not perfect people either. There was just so much hurt between the two groups. At one point, they felt stuck, like there wasn't a good way forward for them together or even as Christians together. They even thought of giving up and going separate ways. Now, as Christians, we are approaching a season where feelings are going to run high, where there will just plain be disagreements and tension in our nation about politics, about the way forward for our country. Going through our normal lives with the extra stress of the pandemic, of financial strain, of all kinds of things. There is more stress on our homes than even six months ago. We can feel stuck in relationships, but here is the deal. Our God is powerful. Paul reminds us that when we're stuck in any relationship, in a friendship, in family relationships, or even with that other parent, of the kid on your middle child's basketball team. Paul reminds us that neither Paul nor the Corinthians forget 
what has transpired, what's happened between them. They're all Christians and they're all humans. You know and we hear the expression forgive and forget quite a bit, but that's not in the Bible. It's not always possible or a good idea. God did not create me or you to be abused, to be repeatedly intentionally hurt. Some relationships must end. But when abuse is not a part of the equation, when there's hope for a relationship to continue, Paul and the Corinthians turn to God to help them find a way together. They turn to God to help them figure out a way forward. Our scripture is a little hard to understand. We hear the word consolation nine times in five verses. But hear this one more time. For just as the sufferings of Christ are abundant for us, so also our consolation is abundant through Christ. Paul creates this image for us of encouragement and consolation flowing from Jesus to us. And this encouragement and consolation coming again and again and again from God. And then it is being poured out from us. This encouragement, this forgiveness, this healing that we receive from God is exactly what we share with others. Paul and the people that he wrote to, they trust that God is bigger than the hurt that they've experienced. They trust that the power of God, which never stops flowing to us from Jesus, that it's going to help us navigate and get through times and experiences when we are stuck with each other. Paul and the Corinthians all find that the power of God heals them first individually and then in their relationship with each other. The academic dean at Luther Seminary, Craig Kester, describes this process really well. He says, human conflict gave rise to the crucifixion. The resurrection refuses to let human conflict set the terms for how we live. The damage we cause each other does not determine our future. God determines our future. Now think of where else you've seen or heard this image of God's love overflowing. Think of Psalm 23. King David says, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. That means that these difficult relationships don't magically disappear because we're people of faith. King David continues, and you anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. This is what the life of faith is like. What God in Christ does is pour encouragement and consolation into you and into me. This means that it's God's power which helps us navigate rocky and strained relationships. We don't do it alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please join me in praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive the blessing. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God, the Creator, Jesus, the Christ, the Holy Spirit, the Comforter and Consoler, bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Please join me for our closing prayer. Oh God. 
You have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending by paths as yet untrodden through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.